Hello and welcome. You're tuned in to the Disney Story Central podcast, a great place to hear the amazing Disney storybooks you love read aloud. I'm your host, Marie Westbrook, and today it's time for a look inside the lives of the monsters in your closet. Mike and Sully make a great scaring team, bringing plenty of screen power back from the human world. But things get turned upside down when a human child follows them home. Keep your hands, arms, wings, and claws inside the podcast as we present Part 1 of Monsters, Inc., read by John Ross Clark. Monstropolis was a city like no other. Its bustling streets were filled with clanging streetcars and buses, towering factories and skyscrapers, and monsters. All kinds of monsters. There were big, tall, scaly ones. There were short, wiggly ones. There were some with wings, and some with claws, and some with lots of eyes. On this sunny morning, two monsters in particular arrived at work. One was a huge furry blue monster named James P. Sullivan, or Sully for short. His best friend, Mike Wazowski, was small and green and round, with one enormous eye. Mike and Sully worked at Monsters, Inc., a company that collected the screams of children to use as energy. The entire city ran on screen power. Monsters entered the human world through special doors at the factory. These doors led to bedroom closets of human children. When a door was powered up, a monster like Sully could step through it and scare the child, while a technician like Mike collected the scream power. While Sully and Mike were in the locker room, a group of monsters was getting a lesson on how to scare from Mr. Waternoose, the president of Monsters, Inc. Mr. Waternoose was a crab monster with five eyes and a fancy suit. He reminded the group of the most important rule. There's nothing more toxic or deadly than a human child. A single touch could kill you. Just as Sully and Mike were about to head to the scare floor, a chameleon-like monster named Randall appeared from out of nowhere. Mike screamed and fell backward. Randall gave a nasty snicker. What do you know? It scares little kids and little monsters. Randall was Sully's only competition for top scarer at Monsters, Inc. Randall was determined to take the lead. Sully and Mike headed for the scare floor. Mike checked in with Roz, the gravel-voiced slug monster who supervised operations. Roz was very stern. Wazowski, she grumbled. You forgot to fill out your paperwork. Each monster had a station on the scare floor where doors would drop down from a huge vault in the ceiling. Red lights lit up above the doors to show when they were active. Mike cheered Sully on as the big monster opened a door and crossed into a child's room. The day's scaring went smoothly until an alarm sounded. A monster named George had come back with a child's sock stuck to his orange fur. George shouted, get it off, get it off! George's technician, Charlie, wasted no time. 2319, he screamed. Immediately, monsters from the Child Detection Agency, or CDA, swarmed the scare floor and piled onto George. When the CDA agents in their yellow rubber suits finally cleared away, Poor George had been shaved bald. Despite the setback, Sully was very successful. Another day like this, and that scare record's in the bag. Mike gave Sully a high five and headed off for a date with his schmoopsy poo Celia, a monster with pretty purple snakes for hair. But as Sully started to leave, he discovered something strange a purple door that hadn't been returned to the vault. Slowly, Sully opened the door and stepped into a child's bedroom. No monsters there. Relieved, he returned to the scare floor. 
where he was in for a big surprise. There was a little girl clinging to Sully's tail. She giggled at the furry blue monster and called him Kitty. Sully was terrified. He tried to send the girl back through her door, but someone was coming. He couldn't let them see that he had been in contact with a child, so he scooped the girl up and rushed out of Monsters, Inc. Sully found Mike and tried to pull him away from his date with Celia. But in the process, some other monsters glimpsed the girl and started a panic. Sully, Mike, and the little girl barely escaped as the CDA descended on the restaurant. Back at their apartment, the two monsters were frantic to come up with a plan. The girl ran around causing a ruckus, and Mike flinched every time she came near. That is, until she grabbed a one-eyed teddy bear. That's it, Mike hollered. No one touches little Mikey. And he snatched the bear. The little girl screamed. The lights in the apartment surged with a burst of energy. Mike tried to give the bear back to the girl to quiet her down. In his haste, he slipped, somersaulted through the air, and landed upside down in a ridiculous heap. The girl laughed at the silly sight. At the first hint of the girl's laughter, all the lights in the whole building surged brighter than ever and then blew out. Sully was amazed. What was that? It seemed that the girl's laughter was an even more powerful source of energy than her screaming. Hey, Mike, said Sully. This might sound crazy, but I don't think that kid's dangerous. Dangerous or not, the monster still had to get the girl back to the human world. The next day, Sully disguised her in a little monster costume and brought her to the factory. First, Mike had to distract Roz, who was oddly suspicious. Then Mike and Sully saw Mr. Waternoose, so they ducked into the restroom. As the three of them hid in a stall, they heard the voice of Randall's lackey, a monster named Fungus. Randall, what are we going to do about the child? Shh. Randall's voice was as slimy as ever. You just get the machine up and running. I'll take care of the kid. And when I find whoever let it out, they're dead. When the coast was clear, Mike and Sully hurried to the scare floor. A door was waiting. Sully shook his head. This isn't Boo's door. Boo? What's Boo? Mike shouted. Sully, you're not supposed to name it. Once you name it, you start getting attached to it. Now say goodbye to... Where'd it go? What did you do with it? Sure enough, Boo had run off. Sully took off looking for her. Mike tried to follow behind, but Randall cornered him. Where's the kid? Mike crossed his arms. You're not pinning this on me. But Randall was very threatening. He told Mike that the scare floor was about to empty out for lunch. The girl's door would be there. You have until then to put the kid back. By the time Mike finally reached him, Sully had found Boo. They returned to the scare floor where they spotted Boo's door. There it is, just like Randall said. Mike marched happily into Boo's room. Suddenly, Randall leapt out of hiding and trapped Mike in a big box. Sully gasped. The trap had been meant for Boo. Randall scuttled away with the box, and Boo shrunk back in fright. She was very scared of Randall. He was the monster from her closet. Sully and Boo hurried after Randall. They found him in a secret lab, strapping Mike into a huge, dangerous-looking machine. I'm about to revolutionize the scaring industry, Randall gloated as Mike struggled against his bonds. First, I need to know where the kid is, and you're gonna tell me. He pointed to the scary machine. Say hello to the scream extractor. As Randall went to start the machine, Sully snuck over and freed Mike. Sully and Mike went to find Mr. Waternoose so they could tell him that Randall was up to no good. 
They found Waternoose in a training area with a class of new scarers. James, Waternoose grinned. Perfect timing. Before Sully could protest, Mr. Waternoose ushered him into a fake bedroom in the training area. He wanted Sully to show the students how a real roar sounded. Sully was anxious to get to the point, so he obliged and let loose a huge roar. Boo began to cry. She had never seen Sully be scary. Sully felt terrible. He hadn't meant to scare her. As Boo cried, the hood of her costume slipped off her head. Mr. Waternoose gasped. The child! Boo ran from Sully, right into Mr. Waternoose's arms. Mike and Sully explained what they had found Randall doing. Waternoose sighed. I'm sorry you boys got mixed up in this, but now we can set everything straight again for the good of the company. Mike and Sully thought Mr. Waternoose would help them find Boo's home, but the door he led them to was shiny metal with frost around the edges. Mike frowned. Uh, sir, that's not her door. I know, said Mr. Waternoose. It's yours. He shoved Mike and Sully through the door and slammed it shut behind them. Whoa, I did not see that coming. Jeepers. Well, that concludes part one of our presentation of Monsters, Inc. Please join us next time as we bring you the exciting conclusion. And if you're like me and you just can't wait for part two, be sure to grab a grown-up and head over to the App Store to download the Disney Story Central app. You'll get access to all your favorite Disney storybooks on your device, anytime, anywhere. Try entering the code SULLYCAST for a free Toy Story ebook. That's SULLYCAST, S-U-L-L-Y-C-A-S-T. You've been tuned to the Disney Story Central podcast. I'm Marie Westbrook, and I'll see you next book.